International Media TV. Television that listens to you. Hi, I'm Johnny Burrell. Welcome to the program. So as you celebrate with us, we're going to take a look back at the Soul Era style and the fashions that rocked the runways of the 60s and the 70s. So we're going to have a lot of fun this evening. We have two amazing women here this evening, celebrity fashion stylists and costume designers, June Ambrose, yes, and Janetta Boone. Very exciting. But before June and Janetta join us, I would like to introduce our host for this evening. This is very exciting. We have Rennell Brooks Moon, the announcer for the San Francisco Giants with us this evening as well. And they are also a local ro uh, radio personality on 98.1 KISQ. So welcome, Rennell. How is she coming? There you are. Oh, thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks. What's up, y'all? We're going to turn it up in Macy's tonight. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Give it up for my fringe. Yeah. I thought it was appropriate as we discussed the 60s and the 70s. Don't tell me I'm the only one that was rocking fringe back in the day. All right. Well, let's get started. So good to have all of you here tonight. We're going to have a great discussion and a great time. It is my pleasure at this time now to introduce our super bad panelists. As I mentioned, we're going to talk about the fashion and accessories and the attitude that rocked the runways of the 60s and the 70s. And uh, it all still has a huge effect on the way we even dress today. So let me introduce our wonderful panelists that are joining us tonight. Celebrity fashion stylist to the stars and a designer. She has worked with a who's who uh, list in uh, the entertainment industry from uh, Diddy, Jay-Z to Missy Elliott. And she has revolutionized fashion. Please give it up for the fabulous Miss June Ambrose. Hello. Woo. Oh my God, this may be the biggest audience yet. This is the seventh city. One more to go. Well, welcome to San Francisco, girl. And I trust me, it does not get better than this, right? Also, noted costume designer, fashion stylist. She has created memorable period looks in movies like The Notebook and Cadillac Records. In fact, she is one of Hollywood's most sought after costume designers. She's been in the game for over 30 years. I hope she doesn't mind me saying that, but that is quite a feat. Put your hands together for the equally as fabulous Ms. Janetta Boone. <laughs> Wow, this is fantastic. Thank you for such a warm welcome. And uh, peep the shoe game up here, y'all, please. <laughs> I mean, come on. Come on. I see a little 60s, 70s work in here with the platforms. Yes, yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Well, welcome, ladies, to San Francisco. Thank you. We're so happy that you're here. We're looking forward to a great discussion tonight. Well, let's get right to it. There's so much to talk about, about 60s and 70s and the soul era of style. But first of all, speaking of style, and Johnette, I'll start with you. If you could just tell us, what, do, what does black style, how do you define black style? Oh, my gosh. Well, I, I was saying, this is our, what, our seventh panel discussion by now, and so I would start off by saying that black style is who we are. We, it's black, it's brown, it's tan, mm. and it's the body, it's the skin tone, it's how we wear things, the combination of prints and texture. But foremost, it comes from our continent, Africa. That's where everything came from. That's where pigment came from. That's where print came from. That's the origin of everything, that one continent. So that's what black style is. It's who we are. Yeah. Yeah. June? Um, for me, I, black style is punctuation with purpose. Yes. It's like, you know, we like to articulate and express how we're feeling and who we are through our looks. And we are non-apologetic for being fabulous right. as a people. That's right. So that's exciting. 
Like, I, I, I love not being afraid of or, or, or not even having to apologize for wearing something that's over the top. Yes. And I feel like culturally, that's what I was raised around. Yes. I, my mom never told me I couldn't wear something that was ridiculous. <laughs> I, you know, I don't, I don't believe in putting people in boxes. And, you know, style should be colorless. That's yes. right. Black History Month should be all year. Yes. You know, so we're going to celebrate not just today, but we're going to continue this celebration of each other, hopefully, when this conversation is over. Can't nobody dress like black folks. That's right. <laughs> and you just mentioned it. And, and you remember when we were little and, and going to church? Well, still going to church. And, but how our moms were dressed. Even just go to the grocery store back in the day. Moms had the suits on and the pearls and That's their little true. skirts and stuff, right? That's yeah. right. We, we've, uh, black style for me is swagger. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yes, swagger. We swag it out like nobody else on <laughs> earth. Well, let's get right to the 60s and 70s, because I, I grew up during that era, as I mentioned earlier, uh, when I first came out here, thus the fringe. Love the fringe. Thank you. Because when I saw Michael Jackson on the Ed Sullivan show in a fringe vest, I said, Mommy, Daddy, I got to get me some fringe. <laughs> and I think a lot of us here were, were kind of raised in that era, and, and we saw a lot of black style on shows like the Ed Sullivan show back yes. in the day like that. Yes. So let's, let's get into the 60s, and then we'll get into the disco a little bit sure, later. But absolutely. let's talk about the 60s, John. Yes, well, it's actually what happened is we, it's an onslaught of our, what we weren't allowed to do in the 40s and the 50s. It was very cons controlled, very conservative. We were coming out of the Depression era. So women weren't allowed to wear pants. Color was not really a part of the palette. Nothing was going on. Then happiness came along, and that's when color started. That's when fabrication changed. That's when shape changed. Mm -hmm. That's when, like June and I talk about, when the corset came off. You know, yeah. women wore mini skirts. When they the were showing. Oscar leg. That's right. They were showing leg. <laughs> and all of those things. It was a celebration of humanity at that time and music played a large part in that as well yeah yeah it was very mod you know it was like when gentlemen were gentlemen I think the return of the gentlemen is is, is we're here guys are wearing a blazers like their armor you know and they're wearing it with their jeans they're redefining what it is you know wearing a tie is no longer for a special occasion but it's just a matter of fact I mean that's really exciting I think women have we've also redefined our sexuality and what sexy is with more provocative and we want to have more conversation than we want to necessarily show it all off you know so I think it's just we're just redefining as a culture about yes. what the 60s and the 70s lent to us. And we were very mod in the 60s. Yes. We were very kind of, you know, modest. Yes. <laughs> and then in the 70s, we, you know, we brought disco to the daytime. Yes. We went bug wild in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> Man. But getting back to the 60s and, and music and so some of the style icons from the 60s in particular. Well, of course we have Muddy Waters. We've got, I, I mean, he was tremendous because he once he crossed the rivers and went over the Europe, he came back with the British flair mm -hmm. and it was absolutely phenomenal. We've got We've got Eartha Kitt. Mm. We've, I mean, we've got women that were just pouring out, yeah. oozing out sex and, and humanity and bodaciousness. You know, so they are, so we've got Sammy Davis Jr. You know, oh. he brought flavor to the Rat Pack. Man. It was phenomenal during that time. Yeah. And we can't forget about Etta James. I mean, these, of course, are actors that were in the film or icons that were in the film Cadillac Records. And some people don't know the history of what happened. Right. But it's important to know that Rolling Stones named their group after Muddy Waters' song, Rolling Stone. So those things, those things are very important to know how we influence both fashion and people and culture in, in a whole. It's really interesting you speak of the Rolling Stones. It, 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 the British, they always give props. That's At right. least that's what I've noticed. That's They've right. always, uh, unlike, you know, in other places in the world, here, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, they always give props to the fashion, to, you know, Mick Jagger still says Tina Turner taught him how to dance. That's right. But they always give mad respect to the fashion and the trends that inspired them. Paris as well. Like, yes. you know, a lot of the models from Versailles couldn't get work. A lot of the black models couldn't get work in America, and they all went over to Paris to work. And this is when they used to dance on the runways, you know, when the kids used to really give it. And now they're just all very miserable. But this is when, <laughs> you know, back in the, you know, back in that time they you know they were celebrated and they were celebrated not in our country which That's is right. very interesting yeah. well let's move on to the 70s soul <laughs> era <laughs> and we got to talk about soul train oh what's that yes. oh I, <laughs> I got distracted <laughs> 
I got excited and distracted. Oh, it's delicious water. It's just what I was looking for. Let's get into the 70s. Uh, and you can still... You can still see 60s and 70s influences today. Even I was commenting on the shoes. I wish I'd have kept a bunch of platform shoes I had when I was in high school because they've all come back around. That's right. But let's talk about the 70s and the explosion of fashion and particularly the African-American influence, Janetta. Yes. Well, it's Soul Train. Yes. I mean, Soul Train uh, really produced an image of fun. Mm -hmm. You've got women shimmying and sequins and lame and things that really bring excitement to the screen. And then once you have that explosion, then, then the uh, pedestrians, as we call them, pick that up and then they have a little fun themselves. So it really was an excitement. Then you've got flower power going on in Hate ashberry I mean, you've got all these cultures of people just loving the color, the pop of color, the pop of shine, and the glitz and the glamour, and it just brought forth such happiness. It was very, very glitzy. Yeah. What do you have to say about the 70s? I know you love that decade, girl. <laughs> I was born in heels, um, no, but it was very Bootsy Collins, like I remember watching like Soul Train, it was like, you know, I remember just, that was like, Sunday wasn't about, car Saturday wasn't about cartoons, it was about watching Soul Train, right. Yes. you know, and the idea of dancing and the freedom and the energy and the, and the, and the way that the, the fashion was articulated, yes. you know, it was about playing with patterns, it was like the fringe vest, who said to me that they saw someone in a fringe vest and so, was that you? Yes. Who we were talking about <laughs> when that fringe vest appeared and you were like, I need a fringe vest and the fringe vest is still very relevant today. Yes. Yeah. So timeless fashion was being created long before we can, some of us could even know what a know what a uh, overall was yeah. you know or a caftan or a daishiki and, and and the things that were considered cultural became very fashionable yes and you know turban today yeah absolutely i mean the idea of a turban you know as a crown some people are like oh it's a rag on your head but then you know for some cultures it's an it's an iconic head garb yes and it should be celebrated yes absolutely um, and and that i think that's what that ever really brought about was taking things out of context and owning it and living it in the way and through through their eyes through each other's eyes and not being afraid to kind of deliver it i mean there was so much soul going on it's such an inspiration and let's talk about hair too then yes because my afro was out of control <laughs> it was well, the first time i got it done it was whack <laughs> I'm not gonna lie and the jerry curl and the jerry, and curl. The jerry curl oh yeah 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 oh, yeah but we, I mean, that was all about, that was more an expression of freedom. Yes. The, you know, once, you've got the Black Panther movement, who they were very strong and very outspoken in just being able to protect the black culture. Yeah. Their, uh, their claim to fame had a very negative impact or connotation, but who they really were, what they were just trying to protect us from the brutality that was taking place. And in doing so, they said, well, I'm just going to go free with my hair. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to be restricted by making it look a certain way so that I can be accepted. How about accepting? accepting it as it is. Mm -hmm. So then you have people that are wearing their hair in a natural state, which is what's happening now. We've yeah. got a whole new burst and explosion of women wearing, and men, wearing their hair natural. I think naturally blonde. Like now you've got men wearing their hair long in locks. You know, they're not afraid to celebrate who we are as a culture. And can we shout out Viola Davis in her yes. natural hair at the yes. Academy Awards? Yes. 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 And Lupita as well. Yeah, and Lupita. Lupita, Lupita. absolutely. Yes, yes. And Zendaya, who was recently attacked. Right. Yes. The nerve. Yes. Shame. Shame. All bad. She's going to pay, honey. <laughs> <laughs> we don't play that. On social media, it's going down. <laughs> going down. Let's talk about the brothers and the brother style and what influence that the, that the brothers had in the 60s and 70s in, in their look and some of the influences, some of the African-American male style influences of the 60s and 70s. Of course, again, we go back to our music groups. Sammy Davis Jr., Billy Dee Williams. Yes, yes, but then you look at also Jimi Hendrix. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, he was very influential in that time. Men wore platforms then. Oh. Oh, baby, right. they were wearing uh, velvet. Yeah. That's right. They were wearing those white patent leather platform heels with their blue velvet <laughs> boots. Was a was a it was awesome. Breaker. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. They were wearing velvet jackets and purple and yes. paisley and yeah. polka dots and plaids. It was phenomenal because they weren't afraid. And you have that coming back now as well. Yeah. You'll see on the runway with Etro, which is a very prominent Milan designer. Mm. He's mixing those flares. He's not afraid. Burberry even. Yeah. Mm. They aren't afraid to put it out there. Now, some men can't wear it all, some do, 
But, you know, you pick and choose what works for you. And if you can't wear it all together, then you'll pick one piece of it, maybe just a plaid tie. But it's different from the solid tie that you used to wear. So we like to celebrate everyone who takes a little bit more of a risk. (laughs) Exactly. And challenge themselves to go across that line. And, and brothers will wear everything at one time That's sometime. Right. There's always that one brother in a red ass suit, if you'll excuse my language. Red, like, on Valentine's Day or something with a red hat, red, come on. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I apologize to any brother in here that has a red suit. I should have thought of that before I said it. And, and then what about what about like earth, wind, and fire? Oh, absolutely. Wow, when they came yeah. on the scene. Well, and the Commodores, but they came yeah. a little bit later, but we can't, we can't absolutely, we cannot discount the impact that they had. We have the Pointer Sisters. Yes. You know, we have got Sister Sledge. I mean, well, all those women, they, the Pointer Sisters brought vintage to fashion. Yes. And they, they brought respect. Destiny's Child. That's right. I mean, you, 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 you got to think about all the references. You know, That's the Neos, right. the, you know, all the artists you think about that came after. Yes. Where those references were being drawn. Even be Beyonce, her, yes. the idea of glamour came from the Diana Ross era yes. that said he's there. And yes. that's what Tina Knows really celebrated. She loved, she loved the idea of that, of that time. Yes. Talk, please talk about Diana Ross, because yes. she's so important to us as a style influencer. Mm-hmm. Talk about her look back then. And I'm still today, she's out. amazing at 70 years I old today. the world to know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming! <laughs> it's my anthem, I hear it in my head every day. Yes. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Well, Diana Ross took the risk when she did Mahogany. She brought it to the stage. The thing Classic. is, she took a, ghetto, a young ghetto girl yes. who had a dream. She took that dream and she developed her dream. And she said, I'm not going to stop until I actually cross that train track and create a collection for myself and with support. And that was so much for all those girls that are dreaming about the opportunity. It showed them, just like we talk about Diane Carroll, those icons on the screen, whether it's a television screen or a film, that give people hope and opportunity and allow them to see that, yes, there's a risk, there's a challenge, but on the other side, there's greatness and the greatness comes first from within Mm -hmm. and then it comes out to others. And, and even before she went solo, the impact that the Supremes had for yes. a lot of us that were little girls watching, we'd never seen black women yeah. on TV looking that glamorous That's before. That's absolutely correct. Huge impact. Yeah. Yes. And then also, you know, Dionne Warwick. She has a history. She goes to Paris. She's invited by Beaumont, Balmain, mm-hmm. you know, to come to the shows, to go to the Ain't opera. Wrong. She's draped in minks and furs and jewels, but it's how she wears it mm-hmm. that she gets the attention of the paparazzi at that time. And then she brings that influence to America and brings again that regal elegance, yeah. something that we don't see every day. Yeah. yeah. And um, uh, who else did I want to mention uh, from that era? Diana Ross. Oh, Tina Turner. Tina Turner, absolutely. Burn. We got to talk about Tina. June, right. you want to address Miss Tina Turner? <laughs> <Burn. laughs> I mean, not only was Tina like iconic, she, she was iconic physically, um, emotionally. She was so present. I mean, she was, she, was fight, she was fighting before you even knew about the fight. You know, she was, she was breaking, she was crossing over, she was pop culture. You know, before black music was even accepted, she was on the pop charts. That's right. Um, and loved, love glitz. Mm. And loved, and, and you know, she was very, there was something about her, like she showed her legs, but it was still very conservative. Yes. Like you never looked at Tina Turner and thought, she looked slutty. Yeah. You know, yeah. there was something yeah. just, she was so strong. Yes. You know, and I think that really comes across. I mean, confidence is key. Okay. And I think that's what Tina Turner, that's what got her through. And she rocked a lot of fringe in those proud Mary yeah. days, too. <laughs> I'm going to just keep coming back to the fringe, y'all, because it's on point in 2015, right? Am I right about that? Somebody else from the 70s that I absolutely loved, and she always had the flower in her hair, the late, great Donna Summer. Yes. How oh, about her can't style? forget about Donna Summer. Please. Oh, my gosh. She Look was a disco queen, glasses. giving disco. you cleavage, body, but she, done, she did so in such a beautiful... Yeah. She was like a mermaid for us. Yeah. She was just her so beautiful. Her clavicles were her cleavage. I mean, she <laughs> was like, you know, the nape of her back and the way she... And the way clothes draped across her curvy body, because yes. she was no stick figure. Yeah. Yes. You know, it was really... It was great. Oh, she owned that decade. Didn't she own that? She did. And she looked did. great along the way. She did, absolutely. We got to pay attention to, uh, to the brothers, too. Let's talk about Marvin Gaye. Yes. And his look back in yes. the day. Woo, sexual healing, y'all. <laughs> oh, 
know. He, he was, there was a simplicity about him. There was like simplicity with grandeur. Like talk about swag. Like he, he embodies swag like no other. And uh, you know, for men, when I'm working with male celebrity clients, it's really about putting them in the driver's seat and making them feel like they're in control, even though you're going through the back door. And Billy D was very kind of like, uh, I mean, Marvin Gaye was very that. You know what I mean? You always felt like no one was going to touch him but him. That's right. You know, that's he was. Right. That's what made him so iconic. The turtleneck became like second skin. Yes. Yes. You know, like he yes. really, re he effortless style was really what he had. Yes, he brought back the utilitarian look. He made it, he made it available for the working man, mm -hmm. you know, to feel that sex appeal. He didn't mind, you know, once he crossed over and started wearing his crocheted cap, you know, with his turtleneck or his jeans, his you know, coats. his trench coat. It was just so beautiful and elegant and sexy at the same time, yeah. but he let you know that you didn't have to walk out in those velvet suits to be sexy, yeah. you know, to be but that man. <laughs> Right. Yes, he did. He did. He did indeed. Speaking of being sexy on stage, the late great Teddy Pendergrass. Yes. Let's get it on. Woo! <laughs> there was some crazy sexiness coming yeah. from him. Can you talk about his look a little bit? Mr. 70s, the oh my God. teddy bear of the 70s. Good yes. Lord. Remember yes. seeing him at Circle Star, y'all? Yeah. Woo! And the, and the buttons would be unbuttoned. Yes, he, well, he was smoking. He gave you that smoke. He was Kanye. Look. He was very... <laughs> he was Kanye. Cleavage was in for men long before <laughs> Kanye. <laughs> And, uh, and you think about it, the way guys are wearing their pants today yes. as second skin, only difference is that they were bell from the knee down. Yes. Other than that, it was about that hugging that thigh and yes. showing off that male curve. Yes. Yeah. I mean, men were very provocative. <laughs> <laughs> and we enjoyed it, did we not, ladies? <laughs> So we've kind of been around it during this conversation, but if we could just kind of come back and talk about all these influences and how we keep saying it's back in style today. Everything kind of comes back in style. It's kind of cyclical. But from the 60s and 70s, can you specifically tell us what looks you see from the 60s and 70s that inspire how we dress today? Sure. Well, you look at the runway. I mean, it's from New York Fashion Week or from Paris or London or Milan or wherever, you see from a lot of designers the influence of the 60s and the 70s. So many of them are bringing back the caftan. They're bringing back the paisley. That's really huge right and now velvet. coming. Yes, exactly. So it's wonderful to see the translation. There may be a difference in color that, you know, because right now color is so prevalent mm -hmm. in, the, in the trends um, on the collections that may not have been as bright then, but it's wonderful to see. It's refreshing to see it revived again. Yeah, yeah. What do you say, June? It's very saturated. The colors are very intense. You know, you, you, they're very rich. Mm -hmm. Silks are very, you know, obvious to the season as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think also just the way things are draping and cascading across women's bodies. It's like very modest. It's not necessarily skin tight. It's not second skin. Mm -hmm. it's, more, it's more about the drape and yeah. the hang and yeah. the drop waist. Yes. Um, but classic, designers realize that as cons consumers really want staples that they're going to have forever. Mm -hmm. And when you think about fashion back then, it was very timeless. Mm -hmm. And I think we're getting back to less trend and more timeless pieces. Yeah, and so that was really what the 70s offered, because we had to really think about where we're going to place our dollars. Yes. So we were going to make that investment. We wanted to have this blazer for... 20 years, exactly. not just season up, you know, so it's, right. the designers are very conscious right now about what staples are, rich staples, lifetime pieces. Well, and you look at wearability as well, because it goes all the way down to the footwear. Oh, yeah. You see, you know, we, at one point we had a moment where stilettos, seven inch high, yeah. were the trend, well now everyone's come all the way down. You've got Four on the runway. Three inches of stiletto. Oh, right, you know, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You've got the Birkenstock returning yeah. on the catwalk. You've got wow. very practical, comfortable oh, shoes. Taking place. You've got <laughs> anti Birkenstock. I draw the line. <laughs> I draw the line. <laughs> they may not be for everybody. I, that's right. Look, you I know, love Birkenstock. I actually did a, I did a, I did a Birkenstock, but I had to redefine it. I, yes. had to do, I, I did one. I yes. did, I you did. had to junify it. I junified it. Yes. I junified it. Yes. I junified it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, can you educate us on uh, African American designers, past and present, that influence black style? Well, we dialogue about this often, and there was an article in the New York Times that specifically showcased the fact that in the 1970s, there were more African-American designers than there are today. Is that right? It is absolutely true. Wow. And the iconic There's designers... There's a famine. That, yes. 
and the designers that we speak of, Stephen Burroughs, yeah. shared a panel with us in Macy's in New York, and he's one of those iconic designers from the 70s. He was phenomenal. He did color blocking, things that are done now, he did back then. And, however, he's not, he doesn't have a collection right now mm. that is uh, on the forefront. We speak yeah. about Willie Ware, mm -hmm. you know, who's from, actually from the late, late 70s going into the 80s, Byron Lars. Yeah. There are designers, but there aren't many. There's just a handful of designers, and there are a couple that aren't even well known that, um, that influence the uh, trends then. What do you think has happened? What, why did we hit the wall there? I mean, economics, I mean, funding. Mm -hmm. It's a huge issue, you know. Macy's has an incubator program, which is great because they're they're recognizing that it's you know that designers need a platform. They need a, you know they need some guidance and they need access, and that's one of the biggest you know issues. It's like you get an education, you understand, you learn the mechanical logistics about it, but you necessarily the business kind of falls short, mm -hmm. and you have to figure out how do I not spend my life savings to produce an entire collection, get it to market. It's, it's impossible for the average person. Yeah. We're artists, you know, artists need funding and it's, and, and it's in crisis right now. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, one thing that might help out now is the, uh, is the social media with the Kickstarters and the yeah. GoFundMe. That might, be, great. that might be an option for some. Well, we also know that if we band together and support one another, then that is our Kickstarter. Yeah. That's our Kickstarter is if we, you know, you have to let the retailers know what you want. You have to request uh, a certain model or platform so that you can have what it is that you're looking for. Right, right. Just like everything, we got we to gotta speak up and band together. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a no, just a fact, and when you guys hear this number, in 2017, the black buying power would be at $1.7 trillion. Whoa. So know your value. <laughs> know that we, we are spending money, and we have pow there's power in that. So that's, an, that's something that's put in your pocket, put behind, you know, and really think about that number. 1.7 trillion, the black consumer buying power by 2017. Wow. So we, we can do better. And we must do better. Yeah. We must do better. You may applaud if you, yes. <laughs> Big trends for 2015. What should, we, what should we be wearing and what's one piece that the ladies should have in their closet? One essential piece. <laughs> it, it, that's a broad question because it really depends on your body type. Okay. And there's so much color out there, it depends on your complexion. It, it varies, especially when you are uh, of a certain uh, when you are of a certain complexion, what is going to work best on you. So you have to pick and choose carefully those pieces that work for your body, mm -hmm. your height, your stature, and your complexion, all the way down to the color of your hair. Not all colors work great on all people, so right. that's such a broad spectrum and you want to be careful yeah. because you want to make sure that everyone is celebrated in whatever it is that they're wearing. Right, right. I can help you narrow that down too. So June by June Ambrose. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm talking about! <laughs> Footwear, fashion, handbags, outerwear, we got it. So HSN, hatwear. Um, and, you know, I'm doing some really great solution pieces, travel pieces. You know, it's, you know, it's all about finding that thing that feels the most confident on you, but that's also very easy and wearable. I like to, be, I like to call it style by design. Mm -hmm. So each piece that I design, you don't have to think. You, it's just all, it's in, it's in the piece. Whether it's a shoe, whether it's a bag, whether it's one of my dresses or my pants, it's gonna make, it's gonna minimize you, it's gonna find your body. And that's really been, that's been my adventure. It's really finding that effortless style that, that gives a woman the power that she needs. And where is that available again? HSN. <laughs> Dot com until I go on in the 25th. I go live March 5th, HSN. Congratulations! <laughs> Fantastic! We're going to uh, take a quick audience poll here as we look at our style icons of today, of course, Queen Bee, we already know. But uh, what about Queen Bee's sister, Solange? Yeah. Let me hear it for Solange. We have some Solange supporters. Yeah. What about Janelle Monae? Yeah. June, can you speak to those two young ladies? Definitely. Yes. Um, I've, you know, Solange has really come into herself. She was liberated by starting to take, take all her hair off. She mm -hmm. took 
cut her hair down to the scalp, and she started over. And she really discovered herself as a woman. You know, she became a mother very young. And I think that it was really about redefining and reinventing herself. And it's all about the emancipation. You know, I think we're all under construction. And Solange was not afraid to do that publicly because she knew that she had the responsibility to kind of hold the torch for any young girl who felt that she couldn't make that choice. And I have to celebrate her for that. Yeah. And and knowing her personally, you know, she has such conviction and she doesn't stare she doesn't stare away. Like even if you don't get it. And yeah. most trendsetters, when they're out there alone in the ocean and That's people right. are like letting them just sink and come up for air sinking and no one gets it eventually a boat comes along and everybody wants to jump on the ship uh -huh. and that's what's happening you know Janelle Monet, another really confident focused young lady yes. she knows exactly what she wants and she doesn't stray from it and she's like this is who I am this is what I'm selling and she's consistent and most icons are really icons because of consistency. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we can all be iconic. It's just the art of being iconoclast is knowing, finding what works for you and keep doing it. Yes. What do you say, John? It's that simple. That's, I, I, I absolutely concur, it, and that's it. You know, you have to be comfortable in your own skin. Celebrate yourself. You are your celebrity. And once you do that, then you'll find that whatever it is that you're doing, that people will flock to it. The most important thing that we talk about is just wear your own skin. Wear, wear, whatever your skin is, just wear it and wear it proudly. Yeah, be confident in be it. Be confident, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We just have a few minutes, and then we're going to take some questions uh, from the audience. But um, you mentioned complexion, and one thing we didn't really talk about was makeup back in the day yes and um fashion and fair fashion fair <laughs> Woo, i was like hallelujah because that maybelline stuff wasn't working for me oh i was like thank you jesus please talk about fashion yes. fair cosmetics <laughs> fashion fair is the one cosmetic company that spearheaded the uh the whole color palette when it comes to culture when it comes to African American women or women with color because women with color didn't just come from Africa Africa is the continent of Morocco and Egypt and Jerusalem as well so you've got the one company that decided to take that on and we are so many different complexions we run from every hue from vanilla to bittersweet chocolate brown and we love every color of it so they were willing to spearhead that and they're still around yeah. Isn't that fantastic? They're actually sold here at Macy's, yeah. which is phenomenal. Fashion Fair lives! Because <laughs> we live. Because we That's live. Right. That's right. June, darling, talk about Fashion Fair. How did you come aware of fashion, become aware of it? Um, and well, my, gran my grandmother, my mom didn't wear makeup. My grandmother was a glam puss, and she wore fashion fair. Uh -huh. And she wouldn't leave to even empty the garbage or drop me off to school without a lip, a big glasses, a foundation, or something. Yes. Right? So it was like glamour was not even like an option. It was a lifestyle. Yes. And that's really what it's about. It's like, you know, glamour and, and being fabulous is a lifestyle. It's not a hobby. Okay. It's just, you know, right. it's a smile. That's right. You know, it's like if you can't find anything else to wear for the day, put a smile on your face That's right. it'll upstage everything else there you go you know it's all about that swag again yeah. it all goes back to swagger just wear it with confidence and do you that's yeah. right yeah all right we want to take some questions from you all i know y'all have questions for our special guests. oh we've got some on cards here all right oh okay let's see oh, that was smart. Yeah. okay that's right I, that's yes. right <laughs> don't have my glasses <laughs> and and this does nothing what am i doing <laughs> How do you keep a stylish look after age 50? I don't want to look like my 20-year-old daughter, but I don't want to look like my 85-year-old grandmother. <laughs> okay, well, I'll answer that because I'm 53. <laughs> Yay! Yay! The way you keep a stylish look looking 50 is not shopping in the stores that your grandmother shops or your granddaughter shops in and not shopping in the stores of your grandmother. You find things that are suitable for your body, for your age. Once again, because when you put yourself in garments that aren't made specifically for you, that means your age group 
your demographics, you know, we are a demographic, then you find yourself being once again celebrated. So look for pieces that enhance who you are rather than taking away and being a distraction to who you are. It's, I love, uh, June and I talk about this all the time, I love tunic dressing because it's very elegant and it doesn't show any curves. When I want to show curves, I do so, but most of the time it's in the privacy of my own home in front of my husband, right? <laughs> Young women, show a little curve. Get it out there. But do so respectfully, right? And within reason. Don't show what your mama gave you. <laughs> but there are some grandmothers that are out there doing that. And I just think that the most appropriate thing to do is to wear things that compliment you and aren't a distraction. Amen to that. Next question comes to us from The Diva Doll. What keeps you inspired every day when it comes to fashion and raising children? Who wants to speak to that? <laughs> Rock mom's in the house, I can right. tell. Um, you know, I, I wake before the quake, so I'm always like an hour to, this is always a common question, how do you get it all done? How do you cook? And like you wake, I have to get up before everyone else in the house. Yes, I think absolutely. that's so important, because I need my me time. I come first, mm -hmm. and I know we hate to say that as moms, because it's like taboo. But if I'm taking care of you, I have to take care of me so I can have, I could be happy, right? Yeah. So that's, that's half the battle. Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, I'm just inspired by the, by, the, by the idea of living in life. Even on my worst day, I know that it's just a day and it's going to pass. Yeah. Um, and I don't, I, you know, I take things with a grain of salt. And I know that I can change the things that don't feel right. And it could be the power of, you know, I meditate. Mm. I think even if you can practice the art of meditation, whether it's like just spending time, quiet time with yourself. And a lot of us don't do that. Yeah. That little bit of time alone, whether it's 10 minutes, because it's tough. I have attention, I have attention deficit issue. If you talk too long, I, I'm, I'll leave the building. So I have to really <laughs> focus. So that five minutes of just practicing the art of being quiet and be still. You know how they say, peace, be still. Mm -hmm. God, you know, so I, I love the idea of that. Yeah. And it really kind of helps me to kind of conquer and, and inspires me to kind of get through the day. Awesome, awesome. Janetta, would you like to? Sure. I've got two uh, children as well. My oldest son is 20 oh. and my youngest son is 14. Yeah. So I do take me time as well because if I don't focus on my own self for just a little bit, then I can't focus on him and give him what he needs. Yes. And that's really important, especially with young men these days. They need to feel that attention from their mom. Mm -hmm. And in terms of being stylish, you have to keep up with the trends somewhat because then otherwise your kids look at you and wonder what you're talking about when you, in, when you have something to say about what they're wearing. Mm. You know, you have to know a little something. Just open a magazine. Keep yourself current so that you have a refreshing conversation with your children and your peers and so that what you're saying is relevant to them, just like music. It's funny because when you talk about music, a lot of the music now is covers from the past. Well, when I have a conversation with my youngest son and I'll start singing the song and he'll say, Mom, how do you know that? I said, well, because that song was out when I was your age, <laughs> you know? Really? And then I'll play the original and then he'll start snapping yeah. and singing the song. But if you're not relevant, now some songs are not, they don't fit in that category, trust me. <laughs> but he has a different outlook and we have a different kind of dialogue and conversation when he knows that what I'm saying and his dad yeah. he, when he knows that it's relevant. That's great. I just want to add this too as well because she reminded me of something. It's okay to be vulnerable. Yes. I think as, as, you know, as women and as moms we're always in control. We always feel like we have to be in control. I think that I feel the most free and the most powerful when I'm being vulnerable. Yes. Yeah. As strange as that may sound. So it's okay to let loose. Yeah. You know and just do things that are not so predictable and it helps to keep honestly your personal life a little bit on the spicy side. Mm. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> June okay. by June Ambrose honey. <laughs> Got some lingerie in that collection? <laughs> Next question comes from Brianna Danielle. What advice would you give young fashion designers breaking into the industry? Take it, ladies. Where do we start? Oh, there you go. That's all right here. Oh, hey. Um, I say also, you know, I say pace yourself. And really think about the business, because creatively, no one's going to take that away from you. You know, you'll never lose your art but you can lose your business. That's right. So you want to handle your business first and think about exactly who your customer is, who's your tar target demographic. You know, 
designers, you know, they don't necessarily think about that because you're so busy creating, right? Yeah. So after you've, you've, that part you've gotten figured out, but like, who, who am I making this for? And what is it that I actually am, what am I selling? Right? And you don't have to think about doing an entire collection. It's okay to start with one thing. Ralph Lauren started with a tie and he's built an empire. So you can start off slow and grow, and you think about funding. How much money are you willing to spend and expose yourself to, and can you get a return? The ROI is very important in my house. Return on investment, okay? And also, again, think about who's gonna fund this? You know, like you, it's a lot of exposure personally when you, don't have a, when you don't have a partner. And I don't know all the facts and how you're going about it. But also, be creative and use your resources. We have the luxury of social media. You have so much access to people that can actually give your, your collection and your pieces and, and give it light. You know, you can at people on Instagram, Facebook. You can talk to people. You can network. Don't leave here today without meeting someone. Because it just the, 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 fa the act of networking can lead you to something so great. You'd be shocked. There's probably someone in here that's in marketing, someone who's great with websites. There's probably someone who does pattern making, someone who's great with fabric sourcing. Network, talk to each other. You cannot do this alone. You can't, Rome was not built overnight, and it was, not, it was not built by one man. So think about who you can partner with to make this happen, this, this dream happen. Absolutely. Anything you want to add to that? Or? No, I think that that's really great. And in addition to that, you need to be sure that you study, you know, have patience, and, and be committed to what it is that you're doing. And, the, and you'll find at the end of the rainbow, that, or at the end of the day, there is light on the other side. But you don't try and force things along. Take your time, and then the steps will, will take you to the place where you want to be. A lot of people think that what June and I are doing, that it just happened overnight. It's, it's taken years, you know, decades for us to get where we are. But absolutely, we studied and studied and studied and showed ourselves approved. Back then, we went to the library to study. Now you have, you know, you have cool. Google. You can bring things up, you know, with technology. They're right at your fingertips. Everyone has a smartphone, you know, so the information is right there. So every moment that you get, look Look for places where you can be inspired by designers that have started. Look at, also look at their mistakes, because mm -hmm. those are things that you can learn from as well, and they can have you grow to the next place. Mm -hmm. They've paved the way for you, baby girl. Yes, and work those dimples. <laughs> work those dimples. Oh, she isn't the cutest thing. She was great. Looking for investors, you work those dimples, girl. <laughs> That's the name of your line, dimples. Uh, look, at, look at what just happened here. Oh my gosh, that was an amazing moment. <laughs> an epiphany. <laughs> and our final question here, what did you think of Zendaya's Oscar look and the looks overall at the Oscars, I guess, is the question? I thought it was a great night. I mean, you know, Zendaya, I love the fact that she kind of took things out of context, did something very soft with something unexpected. You know, her, her hair, her dreads were under fire. Um, which is really off limits. I thought she looked really sharp. Um, I didn't really understand where the comment came from. It ignorance. was really, it was really, it was ignorance. It was ignorant. Um, but I thought she looked beautiful. I thought all the women really kind of, you know, listen, the Oscars is not where you're going to see Grammys or, you know, Grammys, uh, Grammys fashion. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more classic, cleaner than all of the awards. It's, it's the Oscars. So you, you're definitely going to, people played it safe, but they played it right. Right. In my opinion. I appreciate what young Zendaya is doing. She really is taking risks. And I mean, there were more black and young people at the Oscars than I've seen in years. Before. Yeah. Yes. You know, it was insane. It, there were so many musicians there. It was shocking. I and mean, probably because they were under such fire before, yes. I felt the invitations got opened up a little bit. Yes. The Kevin Hart's. And I mean, there were yeah. so many people of color there. So I think that, would, you know, that played a big part. And hopefully well, that will continue. Yeah. yeah, but a lot of the comments come from fear. It's just like when Viola Davis rocked her red bush at the Oscars. It's just, it's not what people are used to. Yeah. They are used to it being very conservative and done in a certain way. So when you reach outside of that, then you get ridiculed. And that's what we were speaking about before. You just have to, you have to know that what you're doing is for you. And regardless of what kickback you get from people who might not understand it, you still, you do it for you. And someone out there will connect to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Because people, not everyone likes my hair natural. And I've worn my hair straight for years. And it's funny because people say, when my hair is straight, wow, you look amazing with your hair straight. Why don't you wear it straight more often? Then I wear it natural, 
Wow, you look amazing with your hair natural. <laughs> but they're two different kinds of people, you know? Yeah. And so I know that. Yeah. And when I feel like wearing my hair natural, whether you like it or not, I, baby, it's curly. Yeah. Okay. You know? But so there's it, a lot of, it, a lot of girl just, power out there, yes, too. Yes, exactly. We all have her back. We, I think we all got together as a community, yes. and that really said something. Yeah. Yes. And it's not over. I think we're all trying to really make a, make a difference and a change, and it's continuing. This, this, our, this conversation is not over. Oh, no, no, no. It's a process. We all know that. Actually, this conversation is over. <laughs> this particular <laughs> conversation <laughs> I wish we had more time because this has been a wonderful conversation and you have a wealth of knowledge and so much experience to tell us about. Put your hands together, please, for June Ambrose and Janetta Boone. Nice, you stood up. Fantastic and gorgeous. Gorgeous black womanhood up here on the stage right here. Uh, I got some uh, shout outs right quick, everybody, before we move on with the evening. A special thanks to our MAC Cosmetics Glam Squad helped yes. us out tonight. Yes. April, Amy, and Tracy, if you're yes. here, give us a wave. Yes. Thank you for a job well done. Come on out, honey. Yay. <laughs> and uh, on our models that you're going to be seeing, they are going to be wearing some sunglasses, courtesy of our friends at Sunglass Hut. And representatives are standing by to help you pick the right pair of sunglasses tonight. And some special offers are available as well. And finally, stand by. My fringe is in the way. I would like to bring up Raquel Love. Would you just come up here in your beautiful Michael Kors dress, Raquel? Raquel is a personal shopper here at Macy's. The Macy's by appointment office is here on the third floor. It's a free service. So get your personal shopper on. Raquel put my outfit together head to toe, as well as her beautiful Michael Kors dress. Macy's by appointment. Raquel, tell them how to reach you. Uh, our office number is 415-296-4607. It is a free service. We're open seven days a week. Um, and we help you with the entire store, clothing, home, everything. So please call. It'll change your life, I'm telling you. And she's really, really, really good. Now, we do invite you all to stick around for what is going to be a very exciting 60s, 70s inspired Macy's fashion show. We've got a light reception for you as well and a chance to meet and take a photo with our lovely panelists, June and Janetta. <laughs> Have your cameras ready for that. And don't forget to visit Macy's.com. Celebrate now until February 28th to enter for a chance to win a trip for two to New York City, a Macy's shopping spree, and a makeover by celebrity stylist June Ambrose. And another shout out for June by June Ambrose. Coming to HSN next month. Yeah, and hopefully Macy's not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not kidding. One more time for Janetta Boone and June Ambrose. Wonderful. And thank all of you for being here. Please enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you all so much. I'm so impressed with the, how it's organized, with the models, with the sponsorship of Macy's. It's incredible. Wonderful. It's incredible. Wonderful. It is. Well, I'm here with um, 100 Black Women, okay. and they represented tonight. It was such a wonderful event. The ladies that they had on the panel were so um, knowledgeable, and they had so much information. I so enjoyed them, and they were so much fun. Definitely inspiring. Um, I'm a huge friend of June Ambrose, so it was such a inspiration to see her in person, and then to be able to meet her. Like it was, it was an honor. Well, we have to come over and take a, uh, a moment to talk to you two. You're just standing here like models yourselves. What did you enjoy most about tonight? Um, it was really informative. I'm really into fashion, so learning about the history and how it relates to now and how it's relevant to now really inspired me. Wonderful. And you, you look like you stepped off of a magazine cover. <laughs> um, I mean, I mean the same as her. I'm in the fashion. I just wanted to, you know, get a, a better feel for what br what brought fashion to June Ambrose and to Janetta. Um, it was really informative, like she said. Uh, I got a lot of great feedback. I'm gonna take it and apply it to my own life. Hopefully, you know, get out there, spread my wings as well. You know, because I'm trying to break into this fashion industry as well. So, 
Yeah. I love it. I wanted to see how you enjoyed the, the night so far. The night was awesome. The designers were awesome. It's so wonderful to see just all the black love here in San Francisco at Macy's Union Square. Excited to be here. It's awesome. I have had a wonderful time and uh, I am so glad that my, my niece and my granddaughter was here to see how, where they came from. Because I know they remember the music and the fashions because they were right there with me. I really enjoyed myself because I, uh, I got so much because uh, I was learning how to be business savvy at the same time, you know, aside from getting fashion tips. Uh, so I really appreciated that approach that the ladies took on tonight. It's a great show because I'm from San Francisco here and everything they talked about was so real that we lived through it all. And it's just great to see the fashion come through.